The Synchro Mystic presents Synchro Mystique. As with part one, this is the short version of a longer video available on our website, thesynchromystic.com. In our video, Ten Nameless Bible Figures, we noted the centurion who pierced the heart of Jesus. Some say his spear, known as the Lance of Longinus, fills its possessor with supernatural energy. According to eccentric researcher Trevor Ravenscroft, who would get hold of this artifact but der Fuhrer himself? Was this power object the source of Hitler's spellbinding charisma? Did it partially direct his actions? Was the Third Reich as a whole reinforced by occult forces? According to one persistent legend, Hitler was only the front man for an even more formidable magician named Karl Haushofer. If you buy the stories, Haushofer was in league with Tibetan sorcerers and was the ultimate lever puller in wartime Germany, but he was far from the only pertinent personality, and his influence was only one of a number of relevant factors. From Madame Blavatsky's Theosophy to the Teutonic Neo-Paganism of Guido von Liszt. From the Bible of Norse mythology, the Edda, to the mysteriously ancient and now infamous swastika symbol. And from Richard Wagner's operas to the notorious Thule Society. We set the stage by looking into many of the esoteric currents that flowed into 20th century Germany. In this video, we'll look at 10 people who carried these trends into National Socialism. Number 10. Erich Jan Hanussen in his day, Hanussen achieved widespread celebrity as what we would call a mentalist. Like the current British-based performer Darren Brown, Hanussen combined apparent clairvoyance with uncanny feats of mind-reading and telepathy. Unlike Brown, however, Hanussen claimed supernatural powers, and he surrounded himself with symbols of astrology and occultism. Hanussen's renown peaked when he supposedly predicted the infamous Reichstag fire that enabled the National Socialist German Workers' Party Party to cement its political supremacy. It's now suggested that Hanussen's prediction was a foolish disclosure of inside information. Incidentally, this was also the conclusion reached by the Sturmabteilung, or SA, who assassinated him three weeks later. Hanussen would likely have been forgotten were it not for a report from the United States' wartime covert agency, the Office of Strategic Services. According to that, Hanussen taught crowd manipulation techniques to none other than the soon-to-be Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler. Number 9. Alfred Rosenberg Rosenberg is variously described as the ideologue or theorist of German National Socialism. Actually, he was born in the Baltic nation of Estonia, which was then within the Russian Empire, but he fled when the Tsar and his family were ousted and later murdered by the Bolsheviks. Rosenberg was connected to anti-communist resistance within Germany. As discussed in Part 1, a main avenue was the Thule Society, which was run by Baron Rudolf von Sebattendorf. Rosenberg is of interest to us for his 1930 book, The Myth of the 20th Century. In it, Rosenberg sketched mytho-history and traced Germany's origins to lost Atlantis. Much of this was a slightly modified form of theosophy. As mentioned in Part 1, H.P. Blavatsky explained human evolution by postulating our passage through seven root races. The present such race? Aryan, of course. Number 8. Rudolf John Gorsleben in part one, we discussed Ariosophy. The word itself means Aryan wisdom, and it's not altogether misleading to think of it as a Teutonic variety of Theosophy. Whereas theosophists like H.P. Vilvatsky, Henry Steele Alcott, and Alfred Percy Sinnott tended to gravitate towards Eastern religions such as Buddhism. Ariosophists favored Germanic forms of neo-paganism. For some, like seminal Ariosophist Guido von Liszt, this issued in out-and-out -out Odinism. For others, including Gorsleben, it led into fascination with Scandinavian mythology generally. In Gorsleben's view, Germans were a divine race whose history was detailed in two medieval Icelandic collections known jointly as the Edda. Gorsleben's most lasting contribution is his influential translation into modern German of these anthologies. The Eddas remain the most exhaustive sources available for Norse mythology. And in the 1930s to the 1940s, the Edda inspired a search for archaeological evidence of Germany's prehistory and into the roots of what following the Theosophy, some labeled the Aryan race. Number 7. Gregor Schwartz Bastunich One of the many things some people don't appreciate about German National Socialism was that it was heavily informed by pre-existing currents in Britain and Russia. 
Consider, for instance, the English-born Houston Stuart Chamberlain. In the first place, his 1899 book, Foundations of the 19th Century, exerted a profound impact on the philosophy of men like Alfred Rosenberg. Chamberlain also became so impressed by Teutonic culture, preeminently the musical dramas of Richard Wagner, that he moved to Germany and married Wagner's daughter. Besides this British influence, other shapers of National Socialism came out of Soviet Russia. We touched on the Bolshevik Revolution under Rosenberg without getting specific, but the complicated history involves the movements of an anti-communist coalition of former Tsarist generals and military men. Since their enemies marched under a red flag, this monarchist movement called itself the White Russian Resistance. Among its supporters was Gregor Schwartz Bostunich. He connects up with the fascinating George Ivanovich, G.I. Gurdjieff, whom we intend to profile in top 10 20th century occultists. Schwartz Bostunich's importance lay in the myriad lectures he gave all over Germany detailing the inner workings of an alleged vast Jewish Masonic and Communist conspiracy. His legacy, shared with other white Russian expatriates such as Arthur Cherup Spiridovich, passed to later writers such as English-Canadian naval officer William Guy Carr, Father Dennis Fahey, American political activist Lyndon LaRouche, and British researcher Nesta Webster. Number 6. Carl Ernst Kraft Astrology has a long and storied history, as we may explore in a future project. It also had relevance for several of the more occult-minded individuals in the Third Reich. Croft was one of the most important of these. Similarly to Hanusen, Croft's name was associated with a crisis. In Croft's case, he made a specific prediction of imminent danger to Adolf Hitler on November 2nd, 1939. Six days later, on November 8th, Hitler narrowly escaped an assassination attempt when a bomb ripped apart the stage he had just been speaking from. Croft was suspected of complicity in the assassination attempt and was immediately brought in for questioning. Croft posted that his knowledge knowledge of the threat on Der Fuhrer was based on his understanding of celestial arcana. Evidently, his explanation was persuasive. Not only were all suspicions lifted, but Croft was also tasked to head up something called the Nostradamus Project. Recall that Nostradamus, born Michel de Nostradam, was the 16th century French seer who wrote a collection of prophecies now known as the Centuries. Nostradamus's text, made up of four-line poems called Quatrains, is notoriously obscure. Croft's job was to publicize interpretations that were favorable to the Reich. Of course, the Allied powers had their own astrologer propagandists pushing equal and opposite analyses, except their aim was to demoralize Germany and disparage its leadership. Number 5. Ignaz Trebitsch Lincoln Like Frederick Eckstein, whom we profiled in Part 1, Trebitsch Lincoln was Jewish. During the course of his colorful career, he switched from Judaism to Anglican Christianity, and finally to Buddhism. Not content to serve as a monk within a pre-established monastery, Trebitsch Lincoln founded his own. Incredibly, in every sense of that word, he declared that he was the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, who died in 1933. And these were merely his ever-changing religious affiliations. For a time, the man was also a member of the British Parliament, and later press secretary for Wolfgang Kopp during the doomed Kopp Putsch in 1920 Berlin. Putsch is the German word for what is better known under the French phrase coup d'etat. Bear in mind that Trebitsch Lincoln seems clearly to have been immersed in the shadowy world of espionage. Researcher Bernard Wasserstein identifies him as a double or even a triple agent. Of course, these phrases refer to spies who pretend to serve one government while really maintaining loyalty to another in secret. Without question, this complicates the analysis of Trebitsch Lincoln, but we can say that he ended up in Shanghai stirring up unrest and bad blood between China and Japan. Oh, I got so distracted by Trebitsch Lincoln's preposterous resume I almost forgot the pertinent bit. He evidently ended his days as an operative of the German secret police. The record suggests that Trebitsch Lincoln worked under Josef Meisinger, the Gestapo's liaison to Tokyo, though what he was doing is still shrouded in mystery. Number 4. Karl Maria Villegut Villegut was another odd duck. His early life is something of a blank, 
but he seems to have pursued a military career. Until, about 1900, while on assignment in Moravia, Villagut became fascinated by an ancient building called the Robinstein. Loosely translated, this means Ravenstone. Villagut's investigations into this prehistoric formation led him to the spirituality of people like Otto Siegfried Reuter and Guido von Liszt, the latter we profiled in part one and Villagut was hooked. Villagut poured over Ariosophic volumes, joined Jörg Lanz von Lebenfels' Order of New Templars, and eventually dove headlong into the Viennese occult scene. Soon, he was meditating on the mythology of Wagnerian opera, studying Theosophy's root race cosmology, and uncovering latent memories of his ancestral history. For the relevant background, again see our first installment. Villagut's storytelling captivated his eventual patron, Heinrich Himmler. The SS Reichsfuhrer tasked Villagut with imagining an Aryan mecha. Villagut apparently didn't disappoint. Firstly, he designed the Death's Head Ring now much sought after as a World War II collector's item. Villagut also drew upon his claimed clairvoyance and post-cognitive powers to recommend that Himmler convert the old castle at Wevelsberg into an SS retreat and spiritual center. At Wevelsberg, one finds the potent iconography of the Black Sun. New recruits were not simply enlisted into the Schutzstaffel, they were initiated as into a medieval military religious order. Except, in this case, Christ was identified as Baldur, and true Christians were Aryans. Wevelsberg's ominous mojo persists. In 1982, U.S. Army Colonel Michael Aquino conducted a magic ritual there under the auspices of his satanic Temple of Set. Number 3. Rudolf Hess for a long time, Hess was one of Adolf Hitler's closest associates. He was also one of the highest ranking officials in the Third Reich. He introduced Karl Haushofer to Adolf Hitler. Hess was born in the mystical land of Egypt. Maybe this predisposed him to otherworldly pursuits. For Hess was well known for his interest in esoteric geography and herbalism, and he was a member of the Thule Society. For more on some of these currents, see part one. But. Hess's chief preoccupation was astrology, and it is this that seems to have led to his undoing. Allegedly, British spymaster Charles Henry Maxwell Knight and his agent Ian Fleming, later creator of James Bond, planned to lure Hess into Albion. Albion is an occult name for England. Part of their scheme involved convincing Hess that the stars were favorable for forging a momentous peace accord between England and Germany. After encouragement from his occult advisor, Ernst Strathaus, Hess flew by himself to Scotland. He was immediately arrested and ended up imprisoned in Spandau, Berlin for the rest of his life. For the intrigue surrounding his imprisonment, including the possibility that prisoner number 7 was not the real Rudolf Hess, see the full version of this video. Number 2. Otto Rahn Ron was part of Villagut's circle and was primarily known in relation to his quest for the Holy Grail. In this, he eventually acquired a highly placed patron, whom we will get into in a moment. Ron helped associate the legendary artifact with rebellion against mainline Catholicism. Before this, the Grail, if there is such a thing, was thought of as a relic belonging to the Church. Culturally, Ron's work with the SS became fodder for such material as Holy Blood, Holy Grail, the Indiana Jones franchise, and Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Inspired by Wolfram von Eschenbach's epic Parzival, as well as the operas of Richard Wagner, Ron's investigations led him to the castle at Montségur in France. Here, in 1244, a contingent of Cathars had at last desperate stand against an army of Catholic crusaders. According to folklore, the Cathars, also known as Albigensians, were in possession of the Grail and managed to secrete it away before their fortress fell. Possibly, it was once in the care of the Knights Templar, who were officially suppressed in 1312. Inexplicably, Ron resigned his SS commission in 1937. Less than two years later, Ron died, supposedly hiking in the mountains. Many alleged suicide, but the circumstances are suspicious. Did Ron find something at Montségur? Did he know too much? We may never know. But Ron lives on in the character of Indiana Jones, who he is said to have inspired. Number 1. Heinrich Himmler an enthusiastic occultist, Himmler weaves together many of the threads we've collected. Like Hess, with whom he shared an affinity for astrology, Himmler was in the Reich's upper echelon. 
It was Himmler who commissioned Villigou to create SS sigils using death icons and Germanic runes. Himmler who initiated recruits at Wevelsburg, turning it into a neo-pagan Vatican. Himmler set up Gregor Bostinich with anti-Masonic speaking engagements all over Germany. Himmler was likely acquainted with propaganda like that made by Kraft's Nostradamus project. But the SS Reichsfuhrer went further. Himmler claimed to be the reincarnation of Frankish King Henry the Fowler and believed Aryans were in a timeless struggle against demonic races. Some sources suggest that, to Himmler, victory was possible only if Germans embraced ancestral ways, such as the worship of heathen gods like Odin and even the practice of folk witchcraft. To help the noble Teutons come out on top, Himmler created the Anonerva Ancestral Heritage Group to seek out fabled magical objects such as the Spear of Destiny and the Holy Grail. Some believe that, over nearly a decade, Himmler attempted to contact a group of so-called secret masters in a hidden underground city called Shambhala. One of the rumored locations for Shambhala was under the Himalayan mountains. So, it was not for nothing that numerous national socialist adventurers set their sights on Tibet. For a related tale, see the film Seven Years in Tibet, starring Brad Pitt. Given all this, it's probably the opposite of a coincidence that the above-mentioned occultist spy, Ignaz Trebich Lincoln, ended up in Asia claiming to be the Dalai Lama. As far as we can tell from the official record, Himmler's various search parties found nothing. But the image of SS archaeologists combing the earth for mystical relics has proven too alluring for Hollywood to ignore. As we've noted, the theme is central to several mega-hits, such as those featuring Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones character. We can't forget Hugo Weaving's portrayal of Nazi General Johann Schmidt in Marvel's 2011 Captain America The First Avenger. Later revealed to be the supervillain Red Skull, Schmidt is on the hunt for a powerful artifact, in this case the Tesseract. Stay tuned for more on that. Of course, Nazi Germany wasn't the first country to have been involved in the occult, as we hope to show in future videos. For now, if you found something of interest, please like the presentation. If you want to be made aware of new content as it becomes available, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. If you have a topic suggestion, correction, question, or comment, don't hesitate to type to us below. Thanks for watching.